Hey guys, welcome to that hashtag show. I'm Sarah, and today I got to sit down with the amazing John McRae, who plays Artie in the upcoming Disney film Cruella. Check it out. Hello. Hi, John. Oh. What a background. Thank you. I felt like I had to keep it up. We cover lots of things. This is our angsty background. Hey, it's great. You know? This one. <laughs> like I felt it was very fitting. Mm -hmm. um, I am so excited to talk with you today. It's not even funny. You uh, are my favorite thing in this Cruella movie. Uh, good. You popped up and literally under my mask in the theater, my jaw dropped. I was like, oh, this is <laughs> amazing. Yeah, he's he's cool character. He's amazing. Um, and I think he's gonna ruffle little feathers and I'm okay with it. Um, <laughs> I think, I hope so. I mean, yeah, that, that's, uh, I think, I think, I think he can do that. I think he can handle it. I think so too. Um, when you were auditioning for this role, did you mm -hmm. have any idea that he might come out on the other side as kind of like an iconic queer representation character in this movie? No, I didn't. I really didn't. I didn't think about stuff like that. Um, Cause I'm just me, I just live my life. You know, it doesn't, I don't think about myself outside of, I don't have my like bird's eye view perspective on myself like that, but um, what a wonderful thing to take away from the job. I was literally just saying um, that the job itself was such an incredible experience that anything beyond that is is like a bonus. I love it. And I was in an interview with uh, Craig Gillespie, your director, and he said, you know, he wanted Artie to be kind of like this David Bowie-esque character. Is that kind of what you went with? Or did you have other influences that you kind of modeled him after? Or did he completely come out of your own brain? No, I mean, I, I definitely think visually David Bowie was always one of the biggest references we had. And I am a huge David Bowie fan. I would love to, <laughs> I'd like to, I think he inspires me in everything I do in some weird way. Um, I was in a, in a theater show for about a year like a couple of years ago and I had a massive David Bowie poster on my wall and I looked at him every day for a whole year it's great um but yeah no I think uh I think and I think he's sort of indicative of that time you know that iconic sort of androgyny and and sort of you know um outlandish clothes and makeup and hair I think he I think he represents a time in which th that that's that's 70s things started to happen you know Artie, I think, I think he was sort of at the forefront. I like to imagine he was sort of at the forefront of, of that iconic era. And he even mentioned that you, he loved you so much in the role that he put you in an extra scene that wasn't originally there. Yeah. Uh, what scene was that? Cause it just seems uh, so flawless. It's one, I do you know, I genuinely can't remember which one it was, but it was, it was not the first one, obviously, because we, we meet him. <laughs> we <laughs> that was, uh, guys, we forgot to write that one. Uh, I think it was, it was one towards the end, but I mean, I was, I was thrilled to be on set every day. And I remember thinking when we shot the, um, the very end of the movie, which I won't say just in case it's a spoiler, but uh, I remember being there and thinking, oh God, he's, he's really involved now, Artie. I mean, he's, he's here for the long haul now. Absolutely. If we get a sequel, you, you better be in it. You better be oh, in yeah. it. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> I know. It's set up perfectly. When you got the call for the role, how did you react? Like, what did you do? Were you so excited? I was so excited. Um, I think I probably got all giddy and, you know, told a couple <laughs> of my friends. And um, I think I do remember I was walking down the street and it was really sunny. That's all I remember. I think I was at, well, I was. In, I think maybe I was filming something else. Or actually, actually, I don't know. See, I haven't told this story before. I actually found out I got the role before I got the role through the makeup designer. Oh, she fun. got my headshot and she was like, oh, you're doing Cruella. And I said, am I? And I hadn't officially found out. So that's how I found out. There you go. There's an exclusive. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> Thank you. I'll take it. That's amazing. You're just like, I'm, excuse me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had an audition for it, and I think I remember it went really well. And actually, I think my, I remember my agent saying, you know, we were doing the negotiations. It, it was a done deal, but I just didn't tell you yet because it wasn't official. So that's how I found out. Because she was the, <laughs> Nadia Stacey, she was the makeup designer on a, on a film I was shooting at the time. Now, did you get any say or input as far as your characters, like wardrobe or hair, or maybe the makeup design, since you were such a big fan? Yeah, I mean... Yes, I, 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 that, that collaborative door was always open. 
But when you're working with the best, with which I was, you kind of don't, you don't need to put your two cents in. Jenny Bevan and Nadia Stacey are really at the top of their game. And, and, and uh, so I was just happy to go along with whatever they want. I do remember, I, I did have one thought, which was, I think I should bleach my eyebrows. Oh. And so I said to Nadia, I said, I think I should bleach my eyebrows. And she said, we were going to ask you to do it anyway. So, uh, you know, all everyone's vision just came together, I think. That's amazing. Did, now, did you get to keep anything? Did you, did you see I didn't snacks? get to keep anything. Um, but I, there's two rings that I wear all the way through the movie, which are mine anyway. So, yeah, because I used, I, I think I wore them to all my costume fittings and I think Jenny was like, those really work. Let's just, you know, let's just wear those on the fingers that usually wear them. So every time I see them now, I think of Cruella's. It's, so it's sort of like I got to keep something without actually stealing anything. <laughs> it's not stealing. It's just, you know. I forgot to bring it back. to take it back. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Now this soundtrack in this movie is incredible. Like yeah. the the fact that he has finger on this button, like in there's a, you know for those who may have not seen it, there's a huge fashion show moment, and the "I Want to Be Your Dog" song comes on. I was like, who came up with that? So what was your favorite song, and what are you currently listening to right now? I've got to say, my favorite song is "I Want to Be Your Dog," definitely because I got to sing it. I went to Abbey Road. I worked with some amazing musicians. I remember thinking, God, this is the closest I'm ever going to get to feeling like a full-on rock star, I think, for sure. Um, and in terms of what I'm listening to at the moment, I know I'm not supposed to be, I'm supposed to be like near my 30s and like growing up, And but I'm so down for Olivia Rodriguez, man. I think she's just cracking. And she reminds me of my youth so much that I, I listened, I've been listening to her just thinking, I know I'm too old for this, but I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> I think you're never too old for music. Like, I feel like, like, if you're, does that mean you can be too young for music, you know? Yeah, that's true, actually. Yeah, no, good point. No, I'm, but so I, I've just been listening to her album, which is really a wonderful breakup album. And she's got such a great voice, such a great voice. She's so lovely. She's so cute. And I love that she's gone down this, like, angsty anger at boys road, because who doesn't love like yeah know, like you know Jack, so I read an article in, with her in the Guardian in which she said you know I'm 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 a young person I feel heartbreak really devastatingly and I just thought yeah you do and actually it's only because she's a young girl that she's getting stick for doing something that everybody everybody does everybody feels angsty about their breakups if Brett Michaels can write a love song that becomes iconic about Pam Anderson anyone can write a love song about exactly. anyone exactly <laughs> Um, I do want, if, if you're fine with it, um, I do want to talk about, since this movie's coming out at the end of May, um, I think Artie is an amazing queer character in a Disney movie that we haven't seen before. Um, mm -hmm. um, and June is right around the corner. We have Pride. I just want to know if there's any iconic characters you saw growing up that were influential to you. I, um, I, I loved Will and Grace growing up. And actually I feel really bad because I got asked this question earlier and I couldn't think of anything off the top of my head, but I now I'm thinking about it. Will and Bates was my favorite show, my favorite sitcom. Um, so I suppose there's always that, but in terms of that, in terms of seeing myself in characters, no, I don't think I ever went, oh, they're, they're just like me. Um, and I think that's one of the sad things about, you know, even just growing up in the 90s, but hopefully that is really shifting now. Um, hopefully it's changing. Yeah, I think so. I think, especially with this character. And yeah, yeah I, I'm serious. When I saw it, I leaned over to my friend. I was like, this is a big deal. Like <laughs> I'm glad I didn't maybe have the perspective at the time because I think it probably would have um, got <laughs> Know, been too much to take too much to handle but um yeah it, I guess it is I mean I guess it is and I'm, I'm happy to take that back on I think people will definitely see it and relate in a huge way um and for those that um we also have um a queer podcast here on that hashtag show called have you tried not being a podcast um mm -hmm. <laughs> and we're going to be doing pride month and I just want to know what pride means to you Pride means to me, I think, uh, just getting together with my with my chosen family and having a good time and 
you know, and, all, and, and living authentically and, and loving and, and, and having friendships. And I think pride is, is such a wonderful thing. And it's always, you should forget the reason it came about. And actually that it's the fight for equality. It's not just a reason to get drunk, shirtless gays sometimes. Um, uh, and I think, I, but I do think uh, pride should be uh, every day, every single day. And, you know, and remembering people like Marsha P. Johnson and, and people that really started a movement, especially trans people of colour. I think that's that's what I, that's a huge part of it for me. I love that. Now, to end it um, with my final question, what was your favourite scene and your favourite moment to film or even watch be filmed in Cruella? My favourite scene was def to shoot and to watch was um, was definitely the, the fashion show at, at the end performing with like that it was and it was booming out and it was like four o'clock in the morning and it was freezing cold and I just wanted to carry on doing it again and again and again I'd still be there now going doing it if if, if no one had told me to stop and the makeup I had diamantes all over my face I remember like five minutes before I was due to go down to set I had like four different people sticking things onto my face and it was just like oh it just really felt like you know it really felt like um it's one of those moments you look at and you go, oh my God, I'm in a movie. It's all, so, it's all go, go, go. And I think people imagine that's what it's like all the time. And the reality is there's a lot of waiting around and a lot of actually just sitting there doing nothing. And that was the closest I ever felt to really feeling like a rock star. And, and it was great. I love it. That was my favorite scene in the movie too. So you and I. Oh, good. Simpatico. I loved it. It started, you start singing her outfit, like the coat. I was like, I'm in yeah, it. And then, and, then, and then she sings it in the elevator up. And I was like, yes, God. Because yeah. it really is an earworm. It gets stuck in your head, that song. Yeah. And it's a song you don't hear often. So I was like, whoa. Yeah. I, I didn't know. I was like, Holy God. Yeah. I love it. Well, awesome. Thank you so much, John, for talking with me today. No worries. Thanks for having me. It was such a wonderful time. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, I'm Sarah. Make sure you are subscribed to our channel. Make sure you comment. Let me know what you thought of the interview and what you're excited about for Cruella. And ring that bell so you don't miss any more videos on that hashtag show.